Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. This is a new episode of Abandoned Sunnahs. Welcome back. <laughs> Allah musta'an. And inshallah we're going to continue going through Sahih al-Bukhari inshallah. So this hadith uh, today inshallah will be dealing with the issue of the two adhans for, uh, and, uh, for Salat al-Fajr. Which is obviously something that a lot of the people nowadays they don't, you don't see it. But inshallah this is what we're going to read today. We're going to go over this hadith about uh, the two adhans inshallah. So this is in uh, Bab al-Adhan Qabl al-Fajr. All right, and this is hadith number 623, 622 and 623 in Sahih al-Bukhari, in Kitab al-Adhan. Kitab al-Adhan, Bab al-Adhan, Qabl al-Fajr. Hadathan ishaqu qala akhbarana Abu Usama, qala ubaidullahi hadathana an al-Qasim ibn Muhammad an Aishata wa Nafi'an ibn Umar, an al-Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala. Wa hadathani Yusuf ibn Isa al-Marwazi, qala hadathana al-Fadl, qala hadathana ubaidullahi ibn Umar an al-Qasim ibn Muhammad, عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال إن بلالا يؤذن بالليل فكلوا واشربوا حتى يؤذن ابن أم مكتوم. Alright, so here is very very clear, and this hadith is also uh, let me see, it's also in Sahih Muslim, so this hadith is متفقون عليه. So basically, you had two adans where Bilal would call the first adhan and then uh, Ibn Umi Maktoum would come and call the second adhan. Just as one was coming down, the other one was, was going up. And of course, Ibn Umi Maktoum was blind, so he would not call the adhan until they said, uh, you know, Sbahta, Sbahta. And when they told him that, you know, the, the morning has come, then he would call the adhan. And then that would be the, the adhan for Fajr. And here, as you can see in the narration, there's nothing specifying any specific time as well as any uh, of the other narrations. So it's not saying, okay, in Ramadan this used to happen. But uh, the illa, of course, is because to wake up the person to get ready for the salat and for the people that might be fasting that day, that they could prepare for the fasting. So, I mean, this is the, the purpose of why that adhan was called. And that adhan should be, and also for the third reason, for the person who's praying, that they should, you know, once they hear the first adhan, they know, okay, I got to finish up. I have to finish up. So you got three purposes. To wake up the person to get ready for Salat. To, to be like a warning for the person who's praying that they need to wrap it up. And for the person who's fasting also, they need to wrap it up. Because that's the first Adhan. So they can continue eating and drinking until the second Adhan is called. But once, the, once they hear the second Adhan, it's done. They have to stop eating and drinking. All right, as soon as the Adhan is called. All right, so, you know, this this is it serves that purpose. And because the people should be doing these actions all throughout the year, you have people fasting throughout the year, you have people praying at night throughout the year, and you have uh, people who are just sleeping. So all of these three people, they need that first adhan, you know, for the, for this purpose, for the purpose that it served. You know, and, and this, this sunnah being left off, especially in the Muslim countries, I cannot, like, you can kind of understand it like in America, because like in America or Britain, I don't know how it is in Britain, but like in America, obviously the majority of the masajid, they, they don't call the adhan outside anyways, because a lot of people, they have to drive to the masjid. So in reality, okay, you say, well, well there's no real point in calling their first adhan because nobody's going to hear it. Okay, but in Muslim countries where the adhan is called out loud and where the people can hear it in their bedrooms, then this, this definitely serves that purpose. And this, this, this being an abandoned sunnah, and even in America, this, this sunnah should still be practiced. And when I was in Los Angeles, we practiced this sunnah, alhamdulillah. We always practice it. In fact, I was the one that called the first adhan. I would make sure, I got out there to make sure that that, that adhan was called first. And the brother Zaid, Allah father, he used to come and call the second adhan. You know, but I always made sure to get out there like a specific time every single day and call that first adhan. Just to make sure that that sunnah was practiced. You know, but that was different, obviously, because we were calling it out loud and the people could hear it because the whole, all the apartments that were in front of the masjid, they were most like, I won't say all the apartments belong to Muslims, but the vast majority belong to Muslims. And the neighbors, they knew they were about to call the prayer and everything. So there were no issues. So that's what we did. But even in Masajid where it's not heard, the people should still practice it because this is the sunnah. This is what, as you see, this is, you know, you see that hadith, muttafaqun alayhi. So this should still be practiced. You know, you know, alhamdulillah, and it should not be abandoned the way that it's being abandoned today. Wallah musta'an. Wa ilahuna subhanakallahu wa bihamdika shahru wa la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruku wa atubu ilayk.